Welcome to County Connection. I'm Summit County Public Affairs Coordinator, Julie Suter, your host. Uh, on this show, we talk about issues, topics, and uh, events coming up with Summit County government. And for our first segment, we have Dan Hendershot, the manager of Summit County Environmental Health. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Julie. Um, and uh, and in your team at Environmental Health uh, really keeps track of a dizzying array of public health um, issues around the county, everything from septic systems to um, the safety of our restaurants mm -hmm. to uh, all kinds of things, um, radon. Um, That's right, yep. But, uh, but we're here today talking about community water fluoridation, mm -hmm. and um, given that this is the holiday season and people will be um, eating more than their fair share of sweets, <laughs> I think this is a very timely topic. Yep, uh, <laughs> yep, I plan to. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, um, so community water fluoridation, so fluoride um, in our public water supply. Mm -hmm. And um, to provide some context, uh, as we walk around this day and age, most people have a full set of teeth, um, mm -hmm. except for the hockey players among us. Yep, there's a few of those around. <laughs> yep, but, uh, but this was hardly always the case. Um, mm -hmm. Isn't that right? So can you take us uh, back in history um, yeah. of oral health? Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. My pleasure. So, yeah, as Julie mentioned, um, fluoride is a naturally occurring chemical. Uh, it's very prominent in the earth. It's about the fifth most abundant chemical out there. And um, so this is nothing new. Um, however, its discovery was new in the early 1900s. Back then in World War II, about 10% of, of recruits into the army were rejected because they needed to have at least six opposing teeth. And 10% of army recruits, you're talking 18, 19 year olds, didn't meet that criteria. At about the same time, it was a common gift for a, a new bride or a high school graduate to be given dentures because oh, wow. teeth were so bad, again, by the time you're 18, 19. And uh, kids in school would commonly get three to four cavities a year. Oh, wow. Now, what's the cause of all this? There's a lot of different reasons, but it's due in large part to community water fluoridation programs. That we're not seeing that, that type of problem anymore. That's right, yep, yep. Um, and so, um, talk a little bit about how um, we came, how our society came to recognize that fluoride was helpful in combating tooth decay. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's interesting. Um, Flor community water fluoridation has its roots in Colorado here. There was a doctor, I believe his name was Frederick McKay, he was a dentist. He moved to Colorado Springs area whenever he graduated and as he started doing work he noticed a lot of the folks coming in had uh, brown teeth and we call that uh, fluorosis, dental fluorosis. And it's, it's when you get overexposed to, to fluoride your teeth start to turn a little bit brown. And so he'd never seen this. He did a lot of research and wasn't finding anything. And so he started looking into it more. So he discovered that this browning of the teeth was coming from fluoride. But even more important than that, he discovered that these kids, adults that were coming in, had a much, much decreased um, level of uh, dental caries or cavities. And so he made the link that it was fluoride while it was darkening their teeth was also making them much stronger as well. Okay. And then so um, so after kind of these first clues that fluoride was helpful in um, combating tooth decay or preventing it, then, mm -hmm. um, then take us to the first uh, forays into actually put a, using fluoride in public water. Yeah, I believe it was Grand Rapids, Michigan in about 1945 about, I believe, 20 years after Dr. McKay had, had done some of his research and come to some conclusions, the city of Grand Rapids decided to uh, optimally fluoridate their water. And I don't remember exactly what the levels were, because those change with research, but they started fluoridating their water in Grand Rapids. And there was a neighboring town, I believe it was Mus Muskegon, Michigan, they were the control. This town kept the normal water as it had always been, no fluoridation. Well, about 15 years into the study, the parents in Muskegon, Michigan, with no fluoride, demanded that they have fluoride added to their water as well 
because the amount of um, dental problems in Grand Rapids kids were so much reduced, it was so obvious back then uh -huh. that they demanded fluoride in their water as well. Right, so the results were so striking that mm -hmm. it was really, they were like, okay, we figured it out. <laughs> That's right, and now we've got fluoride in so many different sources. Um, if you don't have fluoride in your water at home, you crack a drink out of a bottle, well, you've got fluoride in that bottle, or you go to your workplace, you've got fluoride there because um, we get exposed to fluoride from many different sources, including tooth uh, brushing. So the results are not quite as easy to compare these days. Okay. And so th the most compelling evidence, we go back to some of those earlier studies, although studies are still compelling these days as well, just not quite as obvious. Okay. Um, so there are some myths and misconceptions out there about, um, I guess, the risks associated with um, fluoridated water. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, there's a few different ideas, and, and these go, um, ideas go back to the 40s when some of these fluoridation programs first started uh, going into place. There was actually a lot of conspiracy theories that the communists were putting fluoride in our water to kind of brainwash us into believing that uh, communism was the way to go. So these are no, nothing new in, in, in society. But um, some of the arguments are it reduces your IQ in, uh, in children or that it um, lowers your bone density. Um, and, and a lot of these things are true at certain levels. Once you get to very high levels, you can see uh, fluoride have toxic effects, just like any compound. And so that's why the uh, recommended level for fluoride is at an effective dose at 0.7 parts per million, but you're not to go over four, four parts per million because that's when you start seeing some of these negative effects. Right. And the first and that, negative effect that you would see is what we call, what Dr. McKay saw back in Colorado Springs is the fluorosis, okay. which is primarily a cosmetic um, side effect of too much fluoride. But when you get even too much of the fluorosis, it can start to cause problems with your teeth. Uh, but at the right levels, it strengthens your teeth. Okay. And so you were mentioning before about the fact that fluoride is in a lot of the products. It's certainly in, t in the vast majority of toothpaste that's yeah. available um, for purchase. So um, if, if people are brushing with toothpaste that has fluoride in it, then why would we need it in water? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, studies today show that uh, water fluoridation compared to folks that have water and toothpaste versus just toothpaste, they still see about 20 to 30 percent reduction in dental cavities that gets into your bloodstream. So having it just on the surface isn't yep. having the full effect. Exactly. It's a kind of, you know, you look at a lot of problems with multiple solutions and with dental issues, obviously you're not going to just have fluoride in your water and skip going to the dentist. Um, they had dentists back before fluoride and they still had these problems. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of attack a lot of problems with multiple solutions and it's no different with fluoride and, and oral health in general. Okay, great. And then, um, so here locally in Summit County, what's the situation with, um, with our public water supplies? Yeah, we've got uh, several public water systems in the county, of course, uh, but we only have three currently that are optimally fluoridating or, or managing their fluoride levels. Um, those being Dillon Town, uh, Silverthorne Town, and Breckenridge Town. They're all striving to reach that um, optimal level of 0.7 parts per million. Okay, mm -hmm. and so what's the situation then for people with well water or if they get their, if they're on city water um, from not one of those three suppliers? Yeah, so you bring, a, bring up a good point. We'll talk about those who are on public water systems, systems who don't have optimal fluoride first First of all, all water systems are required to not exceed the dangerous level of fluoride. So if you have natural fluoride in your water system and are regulated by the state, you have to keep it low, okay, uh -huh. by removing it. 
And so your primary concern if you're on a public water system that's not one of those three is whether you have enough. And that's generally the case is you don't have enough. Um, in, in those situations, you can talk to your doctor and ask about a supplement. And so where I live, we didn't have um, optimal fluoridated water. And so we uh, have my kid on supplements prescribed by the doctor to um, aid in his oral health. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, are supplements generally recommended for adults as well? Or is that kind of an individual conversation with your doctor? I would say that's an individual conversation with your doctor that is based on some of these different factors, how often you go to the dentist, you get topical treatments of fluoride, um, is it in your water, and all these different different sorts of factors, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and then you asked about private uh, well water users, mm -hmm. and I neglected to answer that question. And so, as most people know, if they're on a private well, there's no one looking at that water quality to say, hey, that's bad, you need to fix this, etc. It's up to the owner of that well, or the drinker, consumer of that well water, to take their health into their own hands. And so, we would recommend for those folks that they have their water tested for fluoride, because they very well might be exceeding the dangerous level of fluoride, um, but they also might be too low and they need to know, know where they stand so they can take appropriate um, corrective action if necessary. Okay. And there's a few different areas you can get your water tested for fluoride. The first is there's some private labs around that will test it or you can take it to the state health department and the cost usually ranges from about 15 to 25 dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's pretty affordable. Yeah. And then what are the logistics? Do you fill up vials and send them off in a package or? Yeah, yeah, generally for the state health department, you would just get a container and mail it to them with one of their forms that are generally available on the website. With one of the private labs, you'd wanna contact them. I'm not sure if they would come out and collect it or you could take the sample to them. Usually you're gonna be uh, you know, less expensive if you can collect it and take it to the lab. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, well, do you have anything to add on this topic or have we covered everything, Dan? Yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything. The only other thing that I'd like to um, talk about a little bit is just this idea of different elements being healthy at one level and being toxic at another level. Um, I brought a couple of um, different um, you know, pills, Absolutely. supplements, you know, medicine type mm -hmm. thing. And this one is just some ibuprofen out of my, uh, my desk drawer here. And uh, it says here, directions, the smallest effective dose should be used. And it's one tablet every four to six hours. Um, and then it goes on to say, warning of don't exceed X number of pills within a 24 hour period. Sure. And so with ibuprofen, and we're if used you, to seeing that kind of a label on all kinds of things. Exactly. And so you've got something even even um, you know less debatable is vitamin D here. Um, it instructs you on how many to use and says don't exceed an X amount within a 24 hour period or don't don't exceed the um, recommended dosage mm -hmm. says keep out of reach of children for obvious reasons this is gummy flavor and they'll eat five or ten of these right and so pretty much anything um, there's a safe level and then there's a dangerous level um, the last example that I'll give is um, with just water in general we see um, maybe not frequently but infrequently people overdose from drinking too much water right there's been radio contests where a lady died because she drank too much water it was a competition or sometimes certain uh, drugs that you take recreationally will cause you to want to drink a lot and people die from overindulgence of water uh -huh. and so it's kind of an interesting phenomenon and uh, fluoride is no different the optimum level of fluoride is 0.7, but if you overconsume it, it can be dangerous, and that's why there are uh, government controls to make sure that that optimum level is, is adhered to by the water uh, suppliers. And we've got over 60 years of human data to study on this sure. to show that um, it is what's being reported, a beneficial 
oral health intervention mm -hmm. that saves a considerable amount of money for about every dollar spent on fluoridating water you save about thirty eight dollars in <coughs> future uh, care with your dentist through cavity uh, corrective action and different things like that. Sure, and yeah. that's real money in a um, consumer's pocket. That that's they're right. Not spending yeah, and, you know, and ultimately just better oral health, which mm -hmm. is a huge benefit. Yeah, and I know supplements are tough. I rec I said we give my son supplements for having uh, no fluoride in our water, but we forget to take our supplements. And with water, it's there every time you drink, you right. know, and you mm -hmm. can easily know how much people are getting when you know what's in their water, you know. Right. So um, if people want to get in touch with your department or learn more about this, um, mm -hmm. where can they, um, how, to, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, they can go to our website. It's just the county's uh, general website, www.co.summit.co.us and then go to public health and environmental health or they can call us our main number is 970-668-4073 actually that's my direct line 668-4070 straight from the horses yeah I'm, I'm not the only one with good information here right. anyone in our office can help people out yep okay great well thanks so much for all this great information dan my pleasure and um Thanks to those of you at home. Stick with us. We will, uh, for our next segment, we'll be talking about I-70 traffic woes and some solutions to those.